Hello, welcome back. I'm here today with a 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning Pro with the standard range battery pack. That has a usable capacity of 98 kilowatt hour. I just completed my 70 mile an hour highway range test with this guy and it went 214 miles on a single charge from 100% down to zero, which was actually an excellent result for the standard range battery pack at highway speeds. So now that I have her at 0% state of charge, we're gonna do the full zero to 100% DC fast charge recording as we do with all our EVs, and as always, make our charts and analyze the heck out of it. And I'm gonna compare it to my full zero to 100% charging session that I did with my Lightning, which has the extended range battery pack. We'll be able to compare DC fast charging between models. But first, don't forget, please, if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. Okay, so before we jump into the charge recording, I wanna point something out. I said in that intro that we're gonna do the zero to 100% charge recording, and I lied. <laughs> the video's only gonna show zero to 90%, and let me tell you why. The, the Lightning, and all versions of the Lightning, has a default setting in the charge settings to only charge to 90% whenever you're on a DC fast charger. It's not the case when you're doing level one or level two AC charging, it'll charge all the way up to 100% in that case. But when you're on a DC fast charger, it will always shut off at 90% unless you go into the charge settings and then there's a tab there that you can hit for a one-time charge limit. You have to put it to 100% and save the setting and then if it works, it will charge to 100%. I did that before I did this recording, but the vehicle still stopped charging at 90%. And it's not the only time it's happened to me. It happened to me once before when I was doing a charge recording on my Lightning with the extended range battery pack. So I think there's a, something a little glitchy about that setting. So when it shut off at 90%, there's no reason for me to start it up then at that point because it's gonna be a new charging session. It's not gonna, have the same exact charging curve if you let it go the whole time and it's going to reset the amount of kilowatt hours and all that stuff so i figured it wasn't worth doing it and quite honestly not many people are going to charge past 90 percent on a dc fast charger because it charges so slowly once you get to 90 percent it's just not worth it by that time you're charging pretty much at level two charging speeds and I've done this recording with my Lightning a few times, all the way to 100, so I pretty much know what that charging curve is gonna look like, and I think it's gonna be just about the same for the standard range battery pack. In any event, there's one other thing I have to point out. I realized after I did this recording that my camera shut off right at the 30 minute mark for 10 minutes. So from 30 minute point to 40 minute point of the charging, I don't have that recording. Now the good thing is it happened at the perfect time because in that period of the charging curve, the charge rate was constant. There's right in the middle of the charging curve, it's, there's a straight line and it happened right when that was happening. So if it was any other time, I would have just redid the whole charge recording, but we didn't miss anything. The, the charging power remained constant for that 10 minutes that we were out. So with that said, let's jump into the full charge recording, at least the full recording that I have on the standard range battery pack Lightning Pro. After that, I'm gonna compare it to my charge recording with my extended range battery pack. But for now, let's take a look at the recording and then we'll jump into comparisons and also the charts and graphs. The one minute mark, we're pulling 145 kilowatt and it climbs to 150 kilowatt by the four minute mark. But that's when the Lightning's initial maximum power boost ends and the charge rate quickly drops down to 121 kilowatt and it holds that for two minutes before dropping down a little bit more. But by now you can see the charging power is dancing up and down. I see this with my extended range Lightning also. It doesn't hold a constant charging rate for the whole charging curve. Here it's bouncing from about 120 kilowatt to 100 kilowatt. And you'll see those two numbers gradually lower as the state of charge rises. Now after 10 minutes, we're at 21% state of charge 
and the charging power is now bouncing between 110 kilowatt and 90 kilowatt. We hit 38% state of charge in 20 minutes and the charging power is averaging about 92 kilowatt at this point and it's now bouncing between about 100 kilowatt and 81 kilowatt and after 25 minutes of charging the Lightning Pro is at 45% state of charge and the charging power now is a little more consistent as it's only bouncing between about 80 and 87 kilowatt. We reach 50% state of charge in 28 minutes. Not bad, under a half an hour. And I'm gonna stop the video at the 29 minute mark because that's when my camera stopped. I want you to look at the charging power here. The Lightning is charging at 87 kilowatt. Now let's take a look at the screenshot of when the recording starts back up 10 minutes later. You can see the Lightning is at 65% state of charge now, and it's charging at 86 kilowatt. It's basically the same charging power, and it's bouncing up and down just about the same as it was at 50% state of charge when the charge recording stopped. So honestly, in that period there, it's a flat line. I was there observing the charge recording and watching it, so I feel comfortable plotting out this full charging curve, even though I'm not showing the audience what happened in that 10 minutes of charging. The Lightning Pro hit 75% state of charge in 47 minutes, and the charging power has actually climbed up now to average over 90 kilowatt, and it does that for a few minutes. It actually holds the 90 kilowatt rate up to the 80% state of charge point, which happens after 50 minutes of charging. But that's when the charging rate falls off of a cliff all the way down to 45 kilowatt. It then takes 16 more minutes to go from 80% to 90%. Now that's twice as long as it took us to go from 70% to 80%. It just goes to show that it's really not worth staying at a DC fast charger past 80% because the charge rate slows down so much. Now, unless you really don't need the extra range, of course, if you need the extra range, you're gonna sit there and wait. Now I don't have the 90% to 100% time, but that would be even longer, probably close to about 45 minutes because the extended range battery lightning takes me over an hour to charge from 90% to 100%. This battery smaller, I'm gonna put it right at about 45 minutes. So you really don't wanna stay past 90% if you're charging at a DC fast charger. Okay, so let's take a look at the final stats here. The Lightning Pro with the standard range battery pack took one hour and seven minutes to charge from zero to 90%. It took in 91.4 kilowatt hour and it cost me $28.21. Now that same charging session would have cost me $13.70 based on the cost of electricity if I were charging at home. All right, so the F-150 Lightning Pro with standard range battery pack isn't a charging monster. It's not terrible, but it definitely is not at the head of its class for DC fast charging. The Lightning with the extended range battery pack charges much better than the standard range, and it has a longer driving range. But the good news is I think a lot of people that get the standard range Pro using it for business they're gonna charge it every day. It's gonna be charged either at their home or at their depot where, where the trucks are parked. So every day it's gonna start out with full battery pack. And unless it's being used to drive, you know, more than 200 miles for a day's work, that's not gonna matter. They're not gonna need DC fast charging. I mean, you always have to use the right tool for the job. And if you need a pickup truck that needs to cover many hundreds of miles regularly for work, then the F-150 Lightning Pro with standard range pack is not the right electric vehicle for you. I mean, we talk about this all the time. You know, even the Lightning is a capable vehicle to tow. It's not the best towing vehicle, even the extended range battery pack. If you have work that needs to frequently cover three, four, 500 miles of, of towing range, you probably shouldn't get a Lightning. As much as I like it, it can do it, but not as well as conventionally fueled vehicles can actually accomplish the same task. Electric vehicles are getting better, the ranges are getting longer, the charging speeds are getting faster, but there are some use cases where ICE is still a better choice, but we're getting there. So next up, we're gonna take a look at our charging power and time to charge charts, and I'm gonna compare it to the DC fast charge recordings I did with my F-150 Lightning with extended range battery pack.
This video is sponsored by QMerit, North America's largest network of electric vehicle charging station installation professionals. I know you may be tempted to install your own EV charging equipment, but I urge you to use a licensed professional to do so. Working with a 240 volt circuit can be extremely dangerous for non-professionals. The wiring may look simple, but there are many best practices that electricians follow that the average homeowner doesn't know about, and it could come back to haunt you. So follow the link in the description of this video and a local QMerit electrician will provide you with a no obligation, no hassle, free estimate. Okay, so first let's look at the charging power graph. This graph has the state of charge on the X axis and on the Y axis it has the charging power in kilowatt. You can see here the Lightning Pro jumped up to 145 kilowatt as soon as I plugged in and it gradually climbed up to 150 kilowatt after four minutes of charging before the power drops down to 121 kilowatt at the 10% state of charge point. Now during the time lapse charge recording, I called this four minute section the initial maximum power boost. And that's worth noting because Ford's charging strategy on the Lightning is very unique, something that I haven't seen on any other EV. When you initially plug in a Lightning, as long as the state of charge is under about 70%, I haven't determined the exact point yet, but I will. The vehicle will charge for somewhere between four and six minutes at a very high rate even higher than what Ford claims the maximum charging rate is. You can see on Ford's website, the company claims the maximum charging rate for the standard range battery pack is 120 kilowatt. We saw 150 kilowatt during this max power boost period. Now this max power boost is great if you only have like 10 or 15 minutes to charge because the Lightning can take in a lot of power in a short time and you don't necessarily have to be at a very low state of charge. Most electric vehicles will only give you the maximum power the vehicle can take at a low state of charge, but the Lightning gives you the short max power boost whenever you plug in, as long as the state of charge isn't very high. Now I'm gonna have a full deep dive video coming out on this topic in a couple of weeks. Okay, so let's look at the rest of the charging curve. I mentioned before that the power dropped to 121 kilowatt at the 10% state of charge point. It holds that for a few minutes before beginning another drop here and it levels off at about 100 kilowatt at 18% state of charge. From here all the way to 80% state of charge, the charging power averages around 90 kilowatt and we have a couple of sudden dips but the charging rate climbs back up after a minute or so when these dips occur. I think these are slight thermal events where the lightning is cutting power a little for a brief moment because components are getting too hot. I did this recording in August after driving the lightning for over three hours at 70 miles an hour for the range test and it was 95 degrees out. So I think if it was cooler we might not see these dips and we would have charged a little faster. So it holds about 90 kilowatt to 80% state of charge, and then the charging power is literally cut in half. This happens to the extended range battery lightning also. It's something that I believe Ford can and will improve upon. The charging rate has to slow up as the battery reaches a high state of charge, but the Lightning Pro's battery is more than 100 kilowatt hour, the total capacity at least, because the usable capacity is 98 kilowatt hour, and I believe that Ford's holding at least 10 kilowatt hour as a buffer. With 110 kilowatt hour battery, I think Ford can increase the charging rate from 80 to 90% to average at least 75 kilowatt, and that would mean the total time to charge to 90% would be less than an hour, even if someone plugged in with a completely drained battery as I did. Now let's take a look at the standard range pro charging curve compared to my extended range Lariat's charging curve. You can see the curves are very similar. The standard range Pro taking in anywhere between 10 kilowatt and 25 kilowatt less than the extended range Lariat at corresponding states of charge. Both have that same initial maximum power boost that lasts for about four minutes before the charging power drops by about 30 kilowatt and then holds the charge rate for a couple of minutes before walking down a bit again and leveling off 
from roughly 20% state of charge all the way up to 80% state of charge. The one thing I brought up before was how the Standard Range Pro dipped and recovered a few times during this charging session. Now take a look at the extended range Lariat and how consistent that charging curve is from about 25% to 85%. I think it's possible that these two lines would be more parallel if I had recorded the charging session on the Standard Range Pro on a cooler day. I think I'm going to try to get another loan of a standard range Pro and repeat this test in the fall because this has definitely piqued my curiosity. Now once the state of charge reaches 80% on both vehicles you can see they both follow the same curve and the extended range Lariat also reduces its charge rate by 50% exactly the same as what we witnessed with the standard range Pro. Now let's take a look at the time to charge graph. Here we have the time in minutes on the x-axis and the state of charge on the y-axis. This graph is actually the most important one because it demonstrates how long you need to charge to reach a specific state of charge and to regain a certain amount of driving miles. I'm going to use two base values for this. First, the EPA range rating of 230 miles per charge and also the results of my 70 mile an hour highway range test, which netted 214 miles. However, I want to remind everyone that EV driving range is highly dependent on a number of factors, including temperature, topography, payload, and other driving conditions. In the dead of winter, for instance, the driving range is going to be much lower, possibly as much as one third less in some conditions. So as with all vehicles, your mileage will vary. All right, so first let's take a look at how long it takes to add back 100 miles of driving range. If we use the EPA range rating of 230 miles, we need to add back 43% state of charge, and that happens in 23 minutes. If we use my 70 mile an hour highway range test, it took three minutes longer and 100 miles is added back in 26 minutes. To add back 150 miles of EPA range, we need to reach 65% state of charge. And in our charge recording, that happened in 40 minutes. And in my range test, we need to reach 70% state of charge. And with just as adding back 100 miles, we needed three more minutes. So that happened after 43 minutes of charging. Now, one more metric I like to point out is how many miles of driving range is added for every minute of charging. I usually calculate this number based on the zero to 80% charging time because most EVs dramatically slow the charging rate after 80%. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Using the EPA range rating as the base, the Lightning Pro adds 3.68 miles of driving range for every minute of charging from zero up to 80%. If we use my 70 mile an hour highway range test results, that figure drops to 3.42 miles of driving range for every minute of charging. Well, that's all for our F-150 Lightning Pro with standard range battery pack DC fast charge analysis. Does the Pro charge like a Pro? I have to say no. <laughs> Even the extended range battery pack Lightning doesn't charge like a champ. It charges okay, but it is faster than what we get with the standard range battery pack, and it has a longer driving range. So, I mean, one of the things you have to consider is most people aren't gonna be DC fast charging the vehicle all that much. Many business owners that get the standard range pro to run businesses, they're gonna be charging it at their depot at home overnight, very rarely using DC fast charge infrastructure. On the occasional road trip, you can get away with it, but I think if you're gonna use the F-150 Lightning and continuously drive it many hundreds of miles for business, you definitely wanna go with the extended range battery pack. The standard range battery pack just doesn't deliver that driving range and it charges too slow to really make it a good workhorse if you need to frequently drive three, four, 500 miles just to get the work done for the day. Well, that's it. If this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, ring that notification bell, subscribe to the channel, give me a like, all that good stuff so you don't miss any upcoming content. And as always, thanks for watching.